Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you will receive alerts when there are new episodes. Go get it. Been grinding for so long, I wake up and chase my goals. I go out and I go get it. How to code, that's all I know. I don't succeed, then I don't breathe. Success, what does it mean? If I conquer all my goals, then I'm living out my dream. Dig deep, go out and get it. Success Chronicles, compete until it's finished. Success Chronicles, go take care of your business. Success Chronicles, it's deeper than just winning. Success Chronicles. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Chip Baker coming to you with another episode of the Success Chronicles. Today we have Mr. Derek Kuntz with us, great guy involved in athletics, doing some really cool things. I'm so thankful to have him on. So first off, thanks so much for taking the time to to interview with me. Absolutely glad to be here. Um, glad we uh, we met. Yes. You know, I think about when we met. Uh, that was uh, just kind of happened happened to happen. And uh, that was good. And I'd heard good things about you before we met mm -hmm. and uh, was thoroughly impressed when we talked. And then, you know, you working with my sister there. Yeah. And uh, she's a she's a huge fan of, of Chip Baker. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I always say people people don't change situations do. Yes. And you're the same person. Um, no matter where you've been, whether it's been at Hearn or Conroe High School or Oak Ridge. Um, you're the same person and you do quality work all the time. And it didn't surprise me that everybody I talked to about you said the exact same thing. So <laughs> anyway. Well, I, I appreciate that. I think that's one thing that you know, I strive to work for is consistency. You know, yes, sir. just uh, you know, be who I am, be grateful for the opportunities, you know, uh, do the best I can with every opportunity I have. Mm -hmm. you no, know, but I think I think when you do those things, look out for people, take care of people. The big man sees fit to take care of you and put you in situations where you can be a blessing to others. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, sir. Let's let's talk about your life story. Uh, OK. If you don't mind, you know, just track your life story. And okay. you know, until now. So, you know, I, I firmly believe that uh, <clears throat> where you are today is the accumulation of everything you've been through up to this point, every decision you've made, um, those all go into making you the, the person you are. Um, so I grew up uh, in Ohio and uh, had an older sister and uh, parents were, were active and, uh, you know, great role models. They were all great role models. My dad, um, my mother, and then my sister, um, so then, you know, I wasn't born in Texas, but we got here as fast as we could. Yeah. That always makes the people from Texas happy when you say that. <laughs> um, and we really didn't know anybody, and we just kind of had us as a as a family unit. And uh, we were we were good. Moved to Nacogdoches, Texas, home of the Dragons, oldest town in in Texas. Yeah. Uh, and then my sister Deidre got got going in sports, and uh, just kind of being little brother, you kind of get drug along to events. And just watching and learning, and, you know, seeing the impact that people have on her life, whether it was the the coaches or um, her teammates and things that way. And then that just <clears throat> just that competitive spirit at an early age kind of got me going and uh, got me turned on to, to sports. Not that I was any good at anything, um, <laughs> but I loved I loved competing. This is um, and. Uh, so we, you know, we moved to Nacogdoches and our thought was we'd, we'd move back to Ohio at some point. And that was January 1st, 1986, when we moved to Texas and never been back. Been here ever since. And, uh, you know, it's a different culture, different, uh, different people, you know, people from the Midwest, a little more standoffish. And people at Texas, you know, they're going to shake your hand, they're going to say hi, and you don't know them. Yeah. And I've, I've grown to to enjoy that. Um, but, you know, growing up in sports, uh, played multiple sports in high school, played football. I uh, wasn't very good. Set the bench. You know, I always played guard tackle and end, you know, guard the water cooler, tackle anybody that comes near it and sit on the end of the bench. Uh, but I loved it. You know, football yeah. is probably my favorite sport. I just wasn't, didn't have the, the athletic ability to do that. Um, 
and then played basketball. Um, weren't very good as a team. I think we're three and 26 my senior year. And then I ran cross country and track and uh, quickly, quickly realized that's where my bread was getting buttered. Um, so, you know, wasn't necessarily real good at that, uh, but I wanted, I had a desire to, to compete and had a belief in myself that, you know, I could compete and I could, could be better. So I walked on at Sam Houston State and uh, the joke was my, my first year I was, uh, couldn't run out of sight in a, a week if you spotted me three days. And, uh, you know, they make songs up about be as slow as Koontz and all that. <laughs> all that was just fuel to the fire. Yeah. You know, and I look at kind of my life. You know, I grew up, you know, my sister was a great athlete. She was all district in basketball. She was the district MVP in volleyball. She was first team all district in softball. And it was like, I want to be that one day. And just that little brother syndrome of knowing I can be that one day, even though maybe nobody else thinks you can, you got that desire. Um, so really, you know, the, the, those comments, I just filed them away and they were just kind of, kind of fueled to the fire that, that burns. Yeah. With, um, had a, had a coach at, uh, one of the universities said, you know, you're not good enough. You're not fast enough to run in college. So we're going to pass on you even as mm -hmm. a walk on. So that was just fuel to the fire. Yeah. Um, so every day you get up and, uh, the funny thing is like, I'm still that same kid. I'm just older and I'm in a different position. So I've been told my whole life that, you know, I wasn't good enough, wasn't talented enough, but you know what I've realized, like hard work beats, beats talent. Any day, any day, any yeah, day. Period. Absolutely. Yeah. And I've also realized like, I'm going to outwork you, you know, talk is cheap. I'm going to outwork you and I'm going to do whatever I need to do to be successful. And I'm not going to let other people, other comments get in the way of me being successful and having success. Um, so, you know, ended up at same Houston and graduated there. Uh, wasn't sure what my major was going to be. Started out in some criminal justice classes. Mm -hmm. uh, my buddies were in kinesiology classes and pedagogy classes and things that way. And I'm like, man, this CJ, this, this is rough. I don't know if I can see, my, see myself living in a prison for, for 40 years, you know? People that don't want to go there end up there. Why am I going to go yeah, to college, yeah. you know? Why am I volunteering to go there? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, kind of took some kinesiology classes and just fell in love with it. And uh, I think back through my life and people that had an impact on me, like there's intermediate coaches that, you know, I wasn't necessarily the basketball player. I was on the basketball team, but I look back at intermediate school. I remember that intermediate basketball coach had a huge impact on my life. Um, Track coach, I really don't remember, even though I was a little better at track, but I remember that basketball coach and one of one of his halftime speeches, we were getting run out of the gym. And he's like, if, if y'all think y'all are smarter than me, go coach own selves. And he hit his hand on that floor, and I thought that floor was about to break. He hit it so hard. And he sat on the end of the bench, and we played our butt off. And we came back and won. Yeah. Because, you know, it's on y'all. You got to do it. You're not listening to me. You're not taking coaching. Go out there and get it done. Um, I'll never, I'll never forget that. I was talking about being scared to death. He hit that floor. Ooh, that popped in that locker room and everybody was just crazy. <laughs> but the point was made, you know? Um, so those coaches had a huge impact on my life. And I think at some point I realized I always wanted to be in education. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to teach and coach. And sometimes you just kind of fight what is obvious. Um, and I think as a society, we, we diminish the importance of educators and coaches. And you talk about, you know, you look at the, the world we live in today. These parents are realizing it's hard to teach. It's hard to teach my kid. 
Yeah. I tell you this, it's hard to teach my kid. Yeah. And I'm an educator. Yeah. And I'm an educator. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but I just think, you know, sometimes in life, life's the best teacher. My oldest daughter hates it when I say that. And she always knows when it's getting ready to come out of my mouth that life is the best teacher, but it is. Um, so, you know, continuing to run in college and just that fuel, those little comments. Um, first year of running at Sam Houston, literally didn't make a travel squad till outdoor track season. So didn't make a travel squad for cross country, indoor. Only reason I made a travel squad for outdoor is because they had the steeplechase mm. and nobody wanted to run it. And I'm like, coach, I'll run it. By the way, what is it? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'll run it. And uh, it was ugly. Yeah. It was bad. You got four by fours, three feet off the ground, and you got to hop over them. And then you got one that's got a water pit on the end, and it's almost two miles, and it's rushed up. You know, it'll test what you got on the inside of you. Yeah, you got to be a man to do that. It's, yes, it takes a, a special kind or you find somebody that can't run anything else <laughs> and you got to fill a spot. And I was the, I was the plugger guy. Put me in coach. I can do it. Yeah. And I go to the conference meet and uh, ran the friends people chase. And I got lapped by the guy that was the conference champ that year. And there was a picture taken and that picture ended up on my wall, right by my bed, right where my head slept every night. So when I got up in the morning in Huntsville, Texas at 6 a.m. and I didn't want to run, I'd roll over and I saw that picture. And he was running by me in that picture. And I made a promise to myself that is never happening again. Yeah. So I'm going to get up and I'm going to run every day. And I'm going to do everything in my power to be as good as I can be. And maybe, maybe that ends up, maybe I get lapped every year for the next four or five years. I don't think that's going to happen, but I'm going to put in the work. Nobody's going to outwork me. So that second year was kind of interesting after that summer. And we came back and we did a time trial and I beat everybody in the time trial, you know, in squad time trial, whatever you want to call it, inter squad meet. And they all look at me like, Coach, what'd you do? Well, Coach, Coach sent us the plan. And I just did it. It said run on Monday. I ran. It said run on Tuesday. I ran. It said run on Saturday. And I ran. It said run on the 4th of July. I didn't care that it was the 4th of July. I ran. I had a bigger purpose than the 4th of July. And we're going to go barbecue and do that after I get done. But I'm here to be successful. And, you know, the coach saying you weren't good enough, the songs they sang, all that was just fuel to the fire. And I use those things. I still use those things to this day. This is probably not a good thing, but it's, it gets me going. Yeah. You know, people, people doubting you and, and what you can do. And, you know, I, was, I wasn't the tallest. I wasn't the fastest. But I realized most people don't want to work. They say they do, but they don't want to put in the time, the effort, the energy to do what it takes to be successful. And I'm just going to outwork you. And when it comes down to it, we're in a race. I know that I felt a whole lot of pain in practice and this ain't quite as bad. And I'm going to make your behind hurt. I love so. it. Man. I love it. And that's definitely, you know, those things like that, like you said, you still kind of use those motivations. Those are transferable skills. Mm -hmm. You know, those are things that we learn through sport that when we apply those same things in our life and really when you think about it, I mean, there's some ups and downs and things we go through in life, but really it's not nothing that that's going to be as painful to your body and your soul and your heart to what you've dealt with. Uh, with that college running experience. That's right. You know, and so, you know, anything that comes along now, hey, bring it on, let's go. <laughs> you know, like, I, like, bro, I, I ran a steeplechase. Like, come on, what you gonna throw at me? <laughs> you know, let's go. And and it's, it's, it's transferable skills. So let's talk about, you know, like, you know, like your college, you know, and then after, like career. 
Okay. So, you know, kind of always are being kind of late to the party of what you want to do in life. You know, that's the question. What do you, what are you called to do? What do you put on this earth to do? And, you know, seeing that, going through that experience, um, you know, high school was good as far as like track and cross country. I wasn't great, but I look back at if I had a coach that was maybe more knowledgeable in what I needed to do on a day-to-day basis to be a successful distance runner, I could have had more success in high school. Cause I used to think a long run in high school was like four miles. Cause that was longer than a race. Well, you know, region two, 5A back then, I'm going up against the Woodlands. Mm. And those guys are running 80 miles a week. And what's Coons running? Coons is doing about 15 or 20. Yeah. So I go and, you know, get like sixth at the region meet and the, the mile and ran okay. Um, but all those thoughts are hitting me as I'm going through college. Like, if I had a coach back then, it was more knowledgeable. I don't question my coaches whether they cared about me or not. They absolutely did. But every year it's like it was a different coach. Um, because they were just, you know, they're filling a spot. I get mm-hmm. it. You gotta find somebody, you gotta fill a spot. Not everybody wants to be the cross country or the distance coach at Nacogdoches High School. You know, people aren't beating down the doors to do that. Yeah. Um, but all those things are kind of pouring over me. You know, if I had a, a bigger foundation earlier, would I have been successful? And watching people go through their college career dealing with coaches that I dealt with in college. And and I had a lot of great coaches pour into me and it just kind of hit me at that point. Like when I graduated, well, I graduated <laughs> issue was I still, because I didn't make travel squad cross country or indoor, I still had a semester left to run and I graduated and they're like, couldn't you, you gotta be a full-time student to run. I said, well, What's a full-time student? Well, you got to take nine hours of grad school. I'm like, grad school? I, I don't want a graduate degree. So what did I do? I took nine hours, and we had a great academic advisor at Sam Houston. And the uh, only time I didn't listen to her, she said, Coach, or Coach, she said, Derek, you need to get your degree in school administration. I said, Coach Thompson, no. I just want to learn about the body and training systems and you know, what we do in practice and how that applies to me. And I just want to do exercise physiology. So that's what I ended up getting my degree in. Lo and behold, you know, 15 years later, I got to go back and get my administrative degree to be a principal and assistant AD and things that way. So hindsight being 2020, she was always right. Um, but I knew I wanted to coach. That was just very apparent because I love the sport. I love the relationships with the kids. Um, I love those, like you said, those transferable skills. Because they do. They do transfer. You got things that kids learn in sport that they will never learn anywhere else. It's, it's a classroom. Yeah. It definitely is. But what we talk about, we have more time with those kids. You're going to reach different kids. Um, but I knew I wanted to coach. So I ended up after I graduated in Houston, worked on my uh, uh, graduate degree and then became a GA and couldn't get paid because at that point, my sister goes back to sister again. She was getting ready to marry the head coach. So because of nepotism rules and laws, he couldn't hire me. So I work for free. So that test, that kind of tests your resolve. How bad, how bad do you want it? Yeah. Is this something, is this avenue you really want to go down? So when I say I lived on like Dr. B and ramen noodles for a year, that was it. And then coach, it was, it was finding odd jobs around the campus. Hold, hold on. Let, let's go back. And uh, <laughs> like, uh, like, like I, I know that life. I know what Dr. B is. But let, let, let's explain to the people what Dr. B is. <laughs> so you buy Dr. B when you can't buy Dr. Pepper. 
you got to go to H E B to the knockoff thing. So in Huntsville, Texas, you go down to H E B, get you some Dr. B, get you some ramen noodles, and that was life. Yeah, it really was. And I can look back now, and it, it you're right, it puts a smile on your face. But going yeah, yeah. through it, it's like, <sighs> just get through the day. Yep. Get through That's the day. It. That's it. Because I knew where I wanted to end up at some point. Um, and I know sometimes you got to sow a seed and you plant a seed today, the harvest doesn't always come tomorrow. Mm-hmm. It might come in a year. It might come in 10 years. But if, if you want to be successful, you got to plant those seeds to reap the harvest at some point. Um, but yeah, little, little Dr. B. So I was like, I was the custodian yeah. around the field house. Uh, one summer I got, uh, cleaned the, the stadium, the, the bleachers with a bottle of bleach spray and a scrub brush and, and got hours that way and just finding odd jobs. I worked pole vault camps. Mm-hmm. I worked a whole pole vault camp set five pole vault pits up by myself and then put them all up by myself. And everybody's like, how'd you do that? Well, needed to get done and I need some money because I got to pay the rent. And, you know, my dad was extremely supportive, like the best dad that anybody could ask for. I just hated asking him for something, you know? Yeah. Because it was, you know, didn't have a scholarship as I, as I started out as a freshman took me till like my junior year to get a little bit of a scholarship. And I knew he didn't pay for, for anything when, when D went to St. Houston, cause she got a scholarship and that's always in the back of my mind. Like, Nope, I'm not doing it. Yeah. I just won't buy Dr. B this week. If I can't afford that, <laughs> for some ramen noodles, I'll just go without it. Cause yeah. I'm going to get, I'm going to get it done. You know, cause you got those, those voices playing in your mind, like, you know, you can't do this, you know, give up. Um, and, you know, my wife and I just had this conversation yesterday. She's like, the way you view things blows me away. Cause you're not, you're not afraid to go out and put yourself out there. And I think like you hit the nail on the head coach and I'm going to use that now. Transferable skills. Yeah. And it is, it goes back to my childhood, all those people, the naysayers, Yeah. those have made me the person I am. And it's like, I, I'm not worried about failing because I failed before. And, you know, if you're paralyzed by fear, you're never going to get anything done. Period. So. Yeah, I think too, you know, on that as well, uh, you know, my first couple of books that I wrote, I uh, co-authored with Dr. Oliver T. Reed, and he's a pastor from the D.C. area, but he has a thing that he says, and, and I love it, how he says, uh, you know, there's nothing wasted, there's no thing wasted, you know, and every experience that we're blessed to experience, okay. we can find the blessings in those lessons and use those to um, not only uh, learn so much about ourselves, right? You know, in that mm-hmm. journey. Mm-hmm. But what it does is it allows us to learn so much about ourselves so that we see how we operate so that we can be the best version of ourselves for others. Absolutely. And that's what it's about. Yes. And that, and that yeah. lights you on fire and allows uh-huh. you to live in your passion. And I kind of, I called it, you know, I think when you do those things, you go through that process, you know, it puts you in alignment with your assignment. There you go. Come on. Love it. Yeah. And, and it. that's football coach coming out in you. Come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's what it is, man. Well, uh-huh. uh, well what are three things uh, you've accomplished in your life that you're proud of? So this, you know, kind of all this stuff mingles together, like the, the childhood mm-hmm. going on to college and running into professional career with personal life and things that way. Um, one of the things I'm proud of and with this, you know, with everything, there's things that you you're happy about. And then there's also, you flip the coin and there's some disappointment there. Um, but you know, not making a travel squad 
as a as a freshman. You know, those were things. But I look back my last year of running after I graduated in graduate school, had an indoor season and uh, anchored a, a DMR, ran the mile leg on the distance medley relay. It was conference champs, came back and got second in the mile. So Friday night, it was prelims of the mile, uh, DMR at the end. So I got a gold medal that night with the team and then came back Saturday morning. This is four ra- four races within 24 hours of each other. Wow. And got got beat at the line. And up, up to that point, my only conference championship was that one that night before. So I'd ran a mile, ran a mile on the distance medley, ran a mile there in the finals. And I was like, I was gassed, but the three K was coming up. And, uh, all those voices, they start coming back at you. You can't do it. Um, you don't have the talent. You're not fast enough. Um, Gun goes off and I'm dead. So I'm back a little bit and just keep running. Just keep running. Stay close. Stay close. And I just stayed close long enough. And I'm like, I'll never forget this. The thought goes through my head. Somebody's going to win this race. And it's going to hurt no matter what place you end up. You might as well go get it. And I, I went. And I was like, I'm either going, I'm going to win or I'm going to blow up and not finish, but I'm going to throw it down and took off, took a, took a lead with uh, a lap to go, which indoors that's 200 meters. And then just put the hammer down and finished my college career as a individual conference champ. Mm. Um, And at that point, I was the the first person in Sam Houston history to be a high point scorer at a conference meet. So there, I think I scored like 20 and a half points between the relays and the, the 3K and the mile. And then I was also named um, outstanding runner of the year. So you look at a guy that started as a walk-on and couldn't make a travel squad to that. So there's, there's a lot of pride in that. The flip side of that is three years in a row outdoors. We missed the team championship by my numbers going to be off. It's been a long time since I looked at this, but it's like four points, two and a half points and a point. Um, and I'd, I'd trade all those individual medals for that team ring in a heartbeat. Um, but all those things go into that success at the end. Um, but that, that right there, it just kind of, kind of blows me away that, and it's not about me. It's about that process. You take somebody, you take anybody. And if they are committed to doing greatness, as long as they don't quit, they can get there. And just my, my teammates reaction after that was, was great. Cause they knew what I've been through. These are the same guys that are singing the songs about me and they sang them in jest, but I took them and that's how I channeled them. Uh, so that'd be one thing. Um, another thing would be when I went to climb force high school, um, to coach there, coach the girls team. Uh, they hadn't been, well, they hadn't won a district championship in I think about 20 years. And, uh, I had no high school experience. You know, I started out as a graduate assistant on the Dr. B and ramen noodles <laughs> and then got an opportunity to go to TCU as the head cross country assistant track coach. Um, one of my beliefs is you interview every day. You put stuff on your resume out there every day and people are watching. People might not tell you, hey, I saw what you did or did not do today, but people are watching. So the guy that ended up being my brother-in-law, 
was watching and a job came open at TCU. He got a phone call. Do you know anybody? And he's like, I got a guy. This is what he does currently. This is how much I'm paying him. So that opened the door and I went and interviewed and was blessed to get that job. And that's a whole nother, you know, realm of experiences there. Um, and lots of great peoples, you know, lots of great opportunities to learn. Uh, but then I went to Klein Forest and they hadn't had a lot of success. And there was a guy there, voice coach, Jack Sands. And that guy is, he's like a big brother to me. I won't call him a father because he'd get bad at me because I'd call him old. Uh, but he was a mentor and I'd ask him questions every day. Why you do this? Why you do this? Because I knew the track stuff. I just didn't know necessarily the implementation at the high school level. And I knew he had done that and he had been successful. Yeah. And uh, just picked his brain, picked his brain. So we had a, we had a group of girls and they were just, they were teachable and coachable and they knew how much I cared about them and how much they meant to me. And the first practice meet we went to at Humble High School, coach, we looked like the bad news bears. I'm like, oh, this might be a long year. But you know what? Like those girls, they just kept working. They kept working. I kept talking them up, kept pouring into them. Didn't tell them they were slow. You know, I took all those things that worked against me and I flipped them on their head. Because my opinion was those kids get beat down enough. Right. They need a positive note, positive message. Okay, you got beat today, but you ran better than you ran last week. And we started building things. And we go to the district meet. And I'm like, here's the point totals. Mock meet. We're a couple points short. We got to go out and get some points. Who in this room can go get those extra points? I don't need an answer. Just go show me on the track. And we went out there and they won a district championship. And then we go the next year and they won back to back district championships. And then the third year in a row, I said, y'all know what back to back to back is called? That's called a three peat. And we went out there and we did it three years in a row. And that right there means the world to me because those girls were teachable and coachable and maybe didn't have the, the most belief in themselves, but they listened. And it was like, you see what you can do just when you put your head down and just go. Yeah. And maybe a different scenario, we don't win them. Maybe we end up second. And you know, success isn't always, isn't always winning. Um, but it's, it's putting it out there and it's not making excuses. Oh, well, I got beat because of this or, or what have you, but they went out there and they, they put it on the line and we were in a tough district. I'm going to tell you that. And it was, it was not down drag. It was Klein Forest and the Woodlands and Lufkin in there. Mm-hmm. And they all had studs. It was unbelievable. You look at some of the, events like 20 foot long jump one you know you got to run run under five to win the mile um i mean it's just every event was a knockdown drag out and we get to the end and they're like coach where we at on points and i knew where we were (laughs) but they ain't gonna they don't need to know i'm like go get some points we need points go lay it on the line and do your best and don't focus on the result focus on the task at hand and do your best in that and you do your best in the 200 these kids do their best in the mile these kids do their best on that four by four we're gonna be all right and that first year coach we had we had 12 girls on that varsity team and three of those 12 didn't score a point so we really had nine that got it done but it's putting it together. It's making sure it's having a plan in place because you got to get from January to that district meet. And that does, doesn't happen. <laughs> it's a long so, time. So we, we didn't win any meets. Those th- first three years at Climb Forest, we didn't win any meets other than the district meet. Wow. 
all year long. And they're like, Coach, we hadn't won a meet yet. I said, there's only one that matters. In my opinion, as a track coach, former high school re rehabilitated track coach, that district meet is the biggest reflection of you as a track coach. Because when, once you start getting to the regional meet and specifically the state meet, it is, it's more about your, your hammers mm -hmm. and them going out and executing. And, you know, year in, year out, there's a lot of schools that don't have that level of kid. You might get a kid here or there, but I think at that district meet, you can take your, your regular Joes and talk them up and get points, get them to buy in, get those points and things that way. Absolutely. And build that, build that team concept. So take a lot of pride in that. Um, another thing I take a lot of pride in is, is my family and my wife and my kids and, uh, blessed with a great wife and two great kids and they are all successful in their own rights. My wife was just named teacher of the year on her campus this year. That's the second time in her career that she's been that. Um, my oldest daughter just graduated from Ohio state a year ago and now she's working on a, a GA spot for uh, this coming year at, at Southern Miss for volleyball. And then my little one, she'll be a freshman in high school and she's taking care of her business and on the honor roll and um, taking care of her sports and things that way. And my job is just to support, not to tell them how everything needs to be done. Just, just go out. And maybe sometimes I know what they ought to be doing, but you need to go experience it. You know, how successful do you want to be? It can't be dad pushing you all the time. It's got to be, it's got to be from within. And if you want my opinion, I'll give it to you. But right now I'm just going to be dad. I, I ain't going to be parent in there Man. yelling at it, pass it, shoot it, you know. No. Let's go back. Let's go you, compete hard and hug them at the end. And when they have disappointment, be there to support them. You know, and, and that's what it's all about. You know, just you know, that, that hits a cool with me because I'm the same way. Um, you know, I've been through the, you know, player, coach, all of that stuff. And, you know, and, and it's funny, you know, my son, was, you know, he's playing soccer. My wife, you know, she's asking me, like, what what you think about how he's doing? Well, I mean, he could probably be better on that. Like, why don't you say something? Like, because I'm dad. <laughs> it's like, dad. Uh, like, I, like, I. I coach like my whistle, like it's in the truck. <laughs> you, you know, go. like uh, absolutely. I'm I'm dad. Like I'm just my statement you know. is I'm off the clock. Yeah, yeah. I'm off the clock. Yeah. I'm dad. Absolutely. That's and I sad. think that's that's refreshing for for your son to just see you at that point is dad. Because mm -hmm. that's to me <laughs> that's a more important title. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Than coach. Now. Sometimes coaches have to be dads Daddy because coach. those kids don't have dads in their lives. Right. Absolutely. And I look back at my group of girls at Climb Horse we had. I was I was dad. Yeah. And they they come to me and I give them advice. And my statement was, we go to track meets. Uh, I'm in loco parentes. That's me. Mom and dad aren't there, and something goes wrong. That's all me. So yes. I'm going to get on your butt. You're not crossing a road. You're not doing this. Absolutely. Because right then, you're my kid. I might not claim you on my taxes, but you're my kid. <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> That's good stuff. Well, let's hit on success. You know, I think uh, with your journey, you know, hearing your journey, uh, hearing the things that you're proud of and the things that you've been blessed to achieve, and I would consider all of those things hugely successful. Uh, what's your definition of success? So I'd say, you know, success, I think it's easy to get caught up in, I get this job, I'm successful. You know, if I'm a, if I'm a freshman football coach, hey, I want to be a varsity coach, and then I'm, I'm good. Those varsity coaches, you know, I want to be a coordinator. Coordinators want to be a head coach. I think success is never being satisfied where you are and always striving to get better. You know, success is a journey, it's not a destination. Um, 
you know, like I'm sure there's people that would say, well, Coons, you know, you've reached, you've reached success. My, or you've been successful. I would say I've reached a level of successfulness, but I'm not satisfied. So I always look at what are things I can improve on? I'm always coaching myself. What are things I can get better on? What are my weaknesses? Cause I ain't perfect. Um, and I asked my, my boss, Coach Young, who I absolutely love to death. And he is, he's a great man and a great leader. And I've learned so much from him. Um, but I always ask him, hey, Coach, what can I get better on? Or I know one of my weaknesses, I don't know football. I have one year of high school football experience mm. because we had, a, we had a baseball coach leave at the last minute at Klein Forest. And uh, he was the receiver's coach. And this is after coaching school. So it's like, ain't no options. So at that point, I was cross-country coach, track coach, and they're like, talk to the head coach. We, we got one option. It's Koontz. Yeah. So I get the phone call, and I'm like, I can't. You understand I don't know football. You know, I'm the, I'm the coach that walks in the football office, and I draw the plays on the board and put the Sharpie down or put the expo down and walk off and go, eat some of that. <laughs> so a funny story I actually did that at Klein Forest one time and they had a college recruiter come in and they left my play up because they all thought it was hilarious and the recruiter comes in and he's like coach I see what you're trying to do and they're like please don't that's our dumb cross country coach he ain't got a clue and he's got too many men on a line of scrimmage and it's like, he's terrible. Uh-huh. So I'm like, you know what? After he finally talked me into it, I went. I never thought I'd coach football. But let's take it. And let's be, a, be an example to kids yeah. on, hey, I'm never too old to learn. So I had, a, had a, one of the coaches specifically took me kind of under his wings and, and led me. And he's like, coach, I just got to get you through a day. I said, well, coach, at this point, that's all, that's as far as I can see is the end of today. If we can chop it up day by day. And then eventually I can kind of zoom out and look at a whole picture, but yes, I need, I need chunks to be successful. And I didn't know anything, but I look back at where I am now. I go back to my statement, you know, where you are today is the sum of all of those experiences you've been through. And that, that year of coaching football was one of the best experiences I ever had because it gave me insight into what those football coaches do. Mm-hmm. As me as a cross country track guy. Yeah, we work hard. Those football coaches. It's different. Oh my gosh. Their statement was coons every day is a Monday. And about, <laughs> about the third week I went, I got it. Every day is a Monday. Makes sense. Took me three weeks. Um, but that was, that was a great experience. And <clears throat> I don't know what a playbook is. So they give me the playbook. And I'm this guy on the sidelines on certain quarters. And I go back to what, what I said earlier. People are always watching. So I'm sitting on my desk or sitting here at the house, and I'm going through the hand signals for the plays, you know, three right, two fold check. We're going through it. And my little one at that point was like, I don't even think she was in kindergarten. And she was watching me. I didn't realize she was watching me until I looked up and I saw her there and I went, all right. How about uh, whatever, three right? She puts her hands up. All right. What about zone? Boom. I pulled her in the coach's office. And I'm saying, guys, call the play. So I got like a two and a half foot tall kid with with a <laughs> hamper on still almost, right? And they call a play and she signals it and they're like, no, 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 no. They called about three more and they were they were blown away. That's awesome. But that just like people are always watching. Yeah. And your kids are watching you. 
and they see what you do. Um, so, you know, that was, that was opportunity to learn and to grow. Uh, did I ever think it would help me at some point? Not really. I was doing it to help out our kids and our coaches and things that way. Um, but really just all of those experiences, my year as a, as an assistant principal at Klein Oak was a great, was a great experience. Um, but I can honestly say like every job I've had, I've absolutely loved. And I think success is tied with that. Cause I think it's easy to get into a situation where you end up being a climber and thinking that success is always the next step. That's why I say there are levels of success. Um, you know, like I'm going to be happy when I'm a head coach. I'm going to be happy when I'm a assistant AD or I'm going to be happy when I'm a superintendent. Um, I think, you know, we need to avoid that as much as possible. Enjoy being an assistant principal at Klein Oak. Enjoy, enjoy being the varsity receivers coach at Klein Forest you got that opportunity enjoy being a a uh, geometry teacher you know because when i walk by these days and i see people coaching their kids or i see somebody teaching in a classroom that tells me everything i need to know because people don't change situations do and if they take shortcuts in their classroom they're going to take shortcuts everywhere else. They take shortcuts in their personal life. They're going to take shortcuts in their professional life. So. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, man, thanks so much for taking the time to hang out with me and dropping some, some nuggets. Okay. Uh, I love it. Yeah, I love it. Good time. Great stuff. And I wish you continued success on everything that you have going on. Absolutely. So I, I tell you this, I've taken this opportunity with all of this pandemic stuff to learn football. Mm. So there's a, you know, with all these zoom meetings. So I've kind of hooked up with this one zoom meeting and every Thursday night for three or four hours, I'm listening to presenters talk about football. Cause I know that's a weakness and I know I can get better. So I'm always, always, always learning. And, uh, you know, that's just, that is vitally important to me because I'm not ever going to ask somebody to do something that me, myself, I'm not willing to do. And that's a, that's a true testament to the, to the person you are and in in your character as well. You know, we started off, you know, you had some pretty, pretty good sentiments to say about me and, you know, I echo those same things about you. I think, um, you know, the proof is in the pudding, if you will, Absolutely. you know, uh, you know, people, you don't have to say anything, but, but, you can see by the body of work what it's about, you know, and I'm that same kind of guy, Absolutely. you know, it's, it's not about I, me, I did, uh -huh. you know, it's about, Hey, what can I do to help? And I'm just here to, to help and, and, you know, whatever, whatever you can see fit and, and coach, like, I like guess you explain, you know, the situation about being a cross country coach and coming into coach receivers, you know, at Klein Forest, you know, like I, I understand <laughs> like the the depth of like man, I am lost. <laughs> you know, like lost. Yeah. So that that guy was a big guy. So they ordered yeah. shirts. He's got a four X. Yeah. So I put a four X on. I mean everything like <laughs> get mad about it, but what am I gonna do? Yeah. So I got a four X on and they are cracking up. Oh man. <laughs> you know? We're having cross country meets Saturday morning and we got football games. Friday, night, Friday. Yeah. Saturday night. So I drive a bus. I got two trip tickets. I fill the first one out. Never change buses, and you just you just roll with it. But there was there were so many good learning opportunities. Yes. And so many great people. So the the guy that kind of took me under his wing is Trent Miller. Yeah. Who's now the head football coach at Spring High School. Yeah. So I had the opportunity to talk to him, and I. I don't think he even realized what he was doing. He was just doing it because it needed to get done. And he knew I needed, I needed like some bumpers down the, the bowling yeah. alley 
to yeah. keep me in the lanes, right? And uh, I look back, and it doesn't surprise me that he's a head coach now. Yeah. Because he sees something that needs done, he recognized it, and he's like, I got to help this guy out. Because the easiest thing to do in this society is just get rid of somebody. Yeah. The hard part is to make them better. And us as, as leaders and what you're doing is about making people better. And that's what we've got to do because there's, you get rid of somebody, there's no guarantee the next one's any better. I see. But if I take somebody that's got a heart for kids and is passionate, I can teach them. We can get them going in the right direction. And I, I can work with that all day because you know, they're going to they gonna give you everything that they got to give like you've done in every situation that you've been in, that you've Absolutely. talked about in this interview. Like you've right. given your all, you know, like that guy running track in Sam Houston to everything the, that you do, that you've done. Right. I, I think the other, you know, flip side of that too is when you approach everything like that, you know, from a, Hey, how can I help perspective? Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm going to give my all perspective. Hey, I'm looking at my personal weaknesses to see how I can get better perspective. Correct. What that allows you to do is maximize your full potential. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like, I mean, like you, you just think about all of those experiences that you've talked about in this time that we've been together. And, you know, like I say, you know, I, I know that life, the buses, the, you know, all of that stuff, you know, like the, the long hours, long waiting for kids. I mean, you know, like all of that, I know that life. So That's it. I, I feel you, but within all of that, it allows you to create some amazing relationships mm -hmm. and those relationships, you know, bring opportunities because, you know, without a doubt, those people know that, that you're a person of character. You're going to work your tail off. You're going to give everything you got to give. You're going to treat people right. Uh -huh. If we need something, we can count on that dude. Absolutely. You know, a, a period without a shadow of a doubt. No doubt. That's right. That's you right. know, and so, man, I, I so feel it because I, you know, I, I've strived to be that same guy, mm -hmm. you know. And so, you know, a lot of times you may not understand things when you're in situations, but if you just know that, and you said this a couple of times, if I can just get through today, and, and, and I want to share this as my SHG principle with you. It's right. along the same lines. And it's the same thing for me, like really just like, you know, that secret sauce, like, you know, every restaurant has a secret this or whatever. Correct. So everybody has something that they're really good at. But I think the secret sauce to allow us to help us maximize poten our potential is like the SHG principle. So I think you have to, yes, learn from the past. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, you, you got to plan for the future. But, but the ability to be in the moment and be on point and enjoy this moment, absolutely, uh, it allows you to be great. And so I think in order to do that, you got to show up. Mm -hmm. You know, if you say you're going to do something, do it. You know, if, right. you, if you, you know, if you sign up for something, be there, be on point. You got to have, a, you got to have a great attitude, mm -hmm. you know, and gratitude is the attitude that determines our altitude, right? That's it. And so, um, you know, and, and like you said, hey, coach, you know, we need you to coach, um, you know, football. Like, let's go, <laughs> you know, you know. Correct. Yeah, you know, and then and then the last is give your all. You know, That's and, it. Uh, some days you may just have 70% or, or 40 or 30 or whatever. But whatever mm -hmm. it is you got to give, give that today. And it allows mm -hmm. you to, when you, when you SHG today, man, it was a good day. Absolutely. You know, and you do that tomorrow. Oh, oh, that's too good. Day. And you can for a week. It's a great week. You know, you Absolutely. continue. To, it's a great month. And you know, I mean, you know, the cycle, you know, years and, and years go by and you you've had greatness every day. What it Correct. allows you to do is, is not just leave a legacy by your actions, but it allows you to live a legacy uh, by your day to day actions. And that's Absolutely. where that, that secret sauce is. That's it. That's it. There's no shortcuts. No, there are no shortcuts. No, you got to put There's the work not. in. Got to put the work in. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, again, coach, man, thank you so much for Thanks taking for the me, time. Coach. I appreciate that, it. Yes. Hanging out with me. Truly enjoyed it. Uh, love what you do. Love, you know, how you do what you do. And I, I wish you continued success. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you guys All for right. checking out this episode. We'll see you next time. God bless. Go get it.